everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here then a massive welcome to you my name is dr baptiste i am a portfolio gp or a gp with a portfolio career if you are new and you haven't subscribed then why not consider subscribing because i have loads of useful videos to support you on your medical journey welcome back to the series just what can a gp do in this episode we will be speaking to dr rachel morris who is not only a gp but an executive and team coach as well as the founder and host of the podcast you are not a frog she's going to be speaking to us about a number of things but primarily about medical education so if you're interested in medical education then this is one not to miss as always, if you enjoyed the video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. This is what Dr. Rachel had to say. Hi, I'm Rachel Morris. I'm a GP. I'm also an executive and team coach, and I host the podcast, You Are Not A Frog. Um, I'm also director of leadership courses for Red Whale, that's GP Update Limited, and I co-authored and I present their Lead Manage Thrive courses amongst a few other things. I'm a, a tutor for the Postgraduate Certificate in Medical Education at Cambridge University at their Institute for Continuing, Continuing Education and I run my own coaching and training business for resilience so it's helping doctors and other professionals in high-stress jobs take back control of their workload and their well-being and their time in order to thrive in work and life. So that's what I do now. So how did I get started in medical education? Well, when I was a GP registrar, the deanery were offering an extra six month placement as part of your training in a special subject of your choice. So some people did dermatology, some people did women's health. I did medical education. I was really lucky I saw an advert um, for a placement at Cambridge University in the general practice education group. So I, I went there and learned a little bit about how to teach. I then worked there firstly as a locum covering some, I think, maternity or someone's sabbatical. I then joined them as an assistant director of studies. Uh, meanwhile, I also worked for a little bit at Homerton College as an associate lecturer for nurses. And I also worked a bit on the refugee doctors program that was running at Barts in the Royal London at that time, helping refugee doctors get through their PLAB exams so that they could work in the UK. So um, I did quite a bit of stuff around medical education. I trained to be a communication skills facilitator uh, with Jonathan Silverman for Cambridge University. And I was basically teaching general practice and responsible for part of the undergraduate medical course for general practice. During that time, I did a master's in medical education as distance learning course. Um, at the same time, I was also having three children. So, you know, this was all sort of spread out through many years um, and working part time as a portfolio salary GP in a practice. Um, after a while, after I'd got my master's, um, the university asked me to look into what they were doing in terms of their professionalism curriculum so um, at that point there was a sort of new iteration of what the gmc expected medical students medical schools to provide and so i looked at where they were addressing issues of leadership and resilience and teamwork and patient safety and all those sorts of other skills that, that make you a, a good doctor and i looked at where that was in the curriculum and um, mapped that out and then i set up and led their doctor as a professional course for the university which uh, examined all those sort of different different types of, of skills really which were you know in addition to the clinical skills that we need as a doctor so as a result of doing that I got really interested in in resilience and the sort of leadership behaviors of doctors and why actually many of us probably weren't great at maintaining our own resilience or our own well-being or you know doing as well as we could do in terms of that I realized actually quite a lot of the the reason was we didn't have any training in it and the great thing is that resilience is a skill it can be learned so that's when my interest in resilience came um, and at some point I decided to do a little bit of a career change I was feeling a little bit, a little bit stuck um, a little bit like I wanted to try something different so I got some careers coaching which I found absolutely brilliant really helpful and um, just started to look into loads of different things and as part of looking into that I did a health behavior change coaching course and learned a bit about how to coach patients and I was really hooked at that point on coaching I thought wow this is just an amazing approach it really changed my life it changed the way I approach conversations the way I approach training the way I approach everything and I then decided to train to be an executive coach not just 
just for doctors, but actually for, for any professional. So I did a, um, an EMCC coach practitioner course, which just was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. And as a result of that, I started going into various different organizations, offering one-to-one -one coaching and also some training around well-being and resilience. I then went on to do a team coaching course and started doing some coaching with some various teams within organizations and with some GP surgeries. And I started to learn really about what sort of tools helped people work better together, help with resilience, and were really, really practical. So as a result of that, I then realized that there were certain things that really, really worked with people that I used again and again and again, for example, like the drama triangle or the prioritization grid, and realized there was a bit of a pattern to that. They were all shapes. I put them together to form the Shapes Toolkit Resilience Training Course, which is now what I then deliver to uh, doctors all over the country, other healthcare professionals and other professionals in high stress jobs. So that's very much the sort of training course that I provide. Um, along the way, I was also introduced to Red Whale, who were just setting up a leadership and management course for GPs, practice managers, nurses, any sort of senior people in the practices. Um, and because of my coaching and sort of the resilience elements from my background, um, they took me on first of all as a, a, a co-author and then I became a presenter and now I'm the director of the leadership courses section for that. So that was just a brilliant, um, a brilliant thing to do. Got some absolutely fantastic colleagues within that. Um, and yeah, and along the way, I also set up a, a podcast because I, I love listening to podcasts and I was just interested to know if I, if I set one up, would anyone be interested in it? Um, and basically... It's everybody that I find interesting that I think, actually, that's an interesting topic. Let's talk about that. Because what I do really enjoy is hearing about new ideas, whether it be the business world or the world of coaching and resilience, and then translating that for doctors. I think sometimes the business world and doctors are really, really separate. And we don't often see much of an overlap. But there's so much that I can learn and my colleagues in primary care and secondary care can learn about looking after ourselves etc etc and actually it, it applies to any profession in a high stress job not you know not just doctors it's often lawyers accountants anyone who really has been promoted in, in their position because of their knowledge um rather than because of their sort of leadership training i guess again it's good news we can all learn this but we often haven't been taught it so so that's where i am today really so my three top tips for getting into medical, uh, medical education would be firstly, take the opportunities that you've got right in front of you. So if there's an opportunity to go, to go and teach people, whether if you're, an, if you're a student, well, go and teach students a couple of years below you or offer to take people on as mentors. Teach people uh, within your college or your colleagues, run, run revision groups, you know, step up and say, look, I can, I can do this and, and take the opportunities that are given. And the great thing is throughout our medical training, we always need people to teach us it's not just consultants that can teach students actually sometimes the best person to teach you is someone who's just that tiny bit ahead of you so they can point their way and show you what you need to know so take the opportunities I would say then be proactive about looking for what's out there so if you see somebody who's doing something you think well I'd love to do that I'd love to do that teaching go ask them if you can buy them a coffee and say can I pick your brains about how you got to where you, you got to? What did you do? And what do you think I could do? So actually go and pick people's brains. And often people love talking about themselves and telling you what they've done in the past and telling what they're going to do. So that's it. So be, be proactive about opportunities. Be proactive about going and talking to people that are doing what you're doing. And I think I would take, you know, I would maybe think about planning your career a little bit you know if you know that education is really what you want to do then what can you be doing now to step up on that and often it might be maybe doing a certificate in medical education you know, get some formal training behind you and take the time to do it i think one thing i've noticed with doctors if we're trying to do everything off the side of a desk you know if you are doing a certificate or a postgraduate certificate or a diploma or a master's you need to set aside the time to do that. And that might be sacrificing a little bit of money. Um, it might be doing your training slightly slower than other people, but, but that's fine. You really need to invest in yourself because the opportunities will come. And the more of this stuff that you do, and the more people who get to know you, the more stuff will come up. So I say, don't wait until things are advertised. 
go and find your own path yourself. So if you want to contact me, my email is rachel at wildmonday.co.uk. You can contact me on LinkedIn. I'm at Dr. Rachel Morris. Um, my podcast is called You Are Not a Frog. So if you Google that, you'll find it. Just, just contact me in any of those ways. Please listen to the podcast. If you like it, share it with other people, leave a rating and review. That would be, that would be really great. And if anyone wants to just, just chat about um, careers, or resilience for doctors or you want any training courses or anything like that then do just get in touch with me i'd love to speak to you i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it gave you some food for thought and maybe even helped you decide on what your next steps are if you are interested in medical education as always if you enjoyed the video then make sure you give it a thumbs up and of course if you haven't subscribed then why not consider subscribing i will see you in my next video